Hello everyone and welcome to another video presentation from GA Farrell & Associates Limited. As you are aware, the Ministry of Finance issued a call for property owners to file a valuation return on or before November 30th, 2021 or face a penalty of $5,000. This return can be prepared manually using the form provided or online. In this video, we will be providing our clients and the general public with some guidance on preparing the manual form. For persons desirous of using the online platform, please look at part two of this series, which is also posted on our social media platforms. You may recall that in 2017, a call was made to file the valuation return on a voluntary basis. At that time, we did a video explaining how that particular form can be filled out, and that video is still being shared on social media up to today. You should note that the information contained in that video is no longer relevant, as much has changed since then, including the return form itself. We are therefore kindly asking that you pay careful attention to the date of this video, September 14, 2021, as subsequent developments may invalidate the information presented here. Also, if the Ministry of Finance publishes any information that conflicts with what we are presenting, you should follow the Ministry's guidelines. Before we begin looking at the form itself, you should note that it requires all owners and occupiers of all residential property, commercial property and agricultural property to file the return. And this would include owners of vacant residential land, single family houses, townhouses, apartments or condominiums and multifamily units. In the case of commercial land, it will be vacant commercial land, office and retail buildings, as well as special purpose properties. For agricultural land, it would include vacant agricultural land, cultivated land, livestock farms, and forested lands. It would also include mixed properties such as where an owner or occupier is occupying part of the building and using another part of it for commercial or other purposes. The return does not apply to industrial property at this time such as warehouses, plant and machinery housed in buildings such as those of the oil and gas industry, manufacturing and processing plants. Also, for persons who filed a valuation return voluntarily in 2017 and were visited by officers of the valuation division, they need not submit this form at this point as their properties were already assessed. You should note that persons who filed a return in 2017 but were not yet visited, they are required to file this return as well. The manual valuation return form is available on the website of the valuation division, which is valuationdivision.gov.tt, and it's expected that this form will also be supplied in hard copy via mail. It may also be collected at offices of the valuation division, as they have mentioned. Part of the form requires that you submit one form of photo identification, a photocopy of this, as well as two photographs of the property, which you can take with your cell phone and print it out to attach to the document. If you have the title document, such as the deed, the cadastral survey plan, a lease agreement, building plans or WASA bill, those may also be submitted, but these are not necessary for the return to be considered complete. We do, however, recommend that if you have such information that you provide it along with your return. The first set of information that is required is that of the owner, the owner's name, as well as the address of the owner, in this case, I have used 23 Arepita Avenue, Woodbrook, Port of Spain, which incidentally is the location of our head office in Port of Spain. The contact details for the owner must also be entered, and this would include the landline number if there's a landline, and more importantly, mobile numbers and an email address. You would also have to include a number of the identification form that was used. The second page, section 2A, has the property details, and here's where you will simply put the address of the property that you're filing the return in respect of, as well as the occupier's name and contact details if someone besides the owner is occupying the property, such as a tenant, for example. You would also put in the category that the property is in, if it is vacant land, vacant residential land, vacant commercial land, livestock farming, or if it is a mixed-use building, such as residential commercial, where an owner is, has a residence on the upper floor and say some type of commercial activity on the ground floor like a supermarket or restaurant, that would be a mixed residential commercial property and so on. The title details would be whether the property is freehold, which means that you own the property forever and ever, or leasehold. Leasehold properties 
at once at a held for a certain period of time. So most properties in Woodbrook Estate, for example, are leasehold. Properties in gated communities, townhouses, apartment buildings, um, HDC properties are all leasehold. If you don't know, you can simply put other. And this is when I would like to reinforce the point that aside from what we've spoken of before, any other information on this valuation return form may be left out if you do not have that information. So if you are unsure about this or any other part of this return, you can simply leave it out and then when the valuation officers contact you, they would seek the necessary clarification to fill in whatever information they need. The land details, the land area stated in the title document, most deeds include a land area in the schedule. However, there are some schedules that simply don't include an area. If you do not know the area of your property, you can simply leave this blank. If you do, however, know it, you can enter it like, let's say, 465 square meters is the average area of a lot of land. If you can also put it in acres, in square feet, just include the relevant units as needed. But as I've mentioned, if you do not know the land area, you can leave that blank as well. Does the property contain a building? If it's vacant land here, you will put no. If it has a building on the land, you would state yes. If there are buildings on site, you would have had to enter the number of buildings there are. So in some cases, there may be just one building. And in other cases, there may be multiple buildings on the property. Of course, if it is vacant land that you are filing this return in respect of, then Section 6A does not apply to you at all, and you can leave this out entirely. So if there are multiple buildings, such as in a case of family land where different siblings have their own houses on the same parcel of land, you will have to print as many copies of this page as you would need one for each building. The building completion date is an average time when the building was finished construction. So let's say this was done in 2014. Of course, this could be a guess if you're not entirely sure. The average residential property either has one or two floors, so you can enter that here. And they're also asking that you provide the area of each floor if you already have this information. So if you have this information from, say, your building plans or from a report done by GA Farland Associates, which may have separated these figures, or from any other source, you can enter it here if you already have that information. If you do not, you can simply leave this out entirely. There is no need for you to measure your property or to go get someone to do this as this is the job of the valuation division. Their assessment officers will be doing an inspection and so they will compute the area based on their own measurements anyway. So you only need to enter this information if you already have it. If you're using part of the building for commercial activities such as a, a supermarket or a restaurant and as part of the structure, you can select yes here. If it's a fully residential property, you can simply put no. If you have tenants in the building, you can state the number of tenants Right? And of course, select yes here and put the information for each tenant in the schedule. Okay. Under building details, you can, if you are familiar with these terms, enter the type of flooring and ceiling finishes, such as ceramic tile floors and a PVC ceiling. If you don't know what this is, again, you can leave it out, as with most anything in this form. Building defects are things like cracked store walls, um, ceiling damage due to water, termite infestation, and, and stuff like that. And so you can put that in here if it applies. Section 6D speaks to the accommodation in each floor. So here you would put, if you have one bedroom on the ground floor, you would enter one here. One bathroom on the ground floor, you would enter it here. If you have three bedrooms on the upper floor, one of which is a master bedroom, you would put that one master bedroom here, which is a bedroom with a bathroom attached and the other two as bedrooms only here, as well as any other accommodation such as a living room, a garage, laundry room, etc. And whatever else is not applicable, you can simply leave that blank. Sundry City Building would include air conditioning. Most properties would not have central air conditioning as that is more common in commercial type property. But if you have split air conditioning units, you can include that here or a window unit. Swimming pools, whether they are in ground or surface, may also be included here. And of course, if this does not apply to you, you can simply leave that out. Directions to the property from the closest main road is simple narrative description of where the property is located. So let's say this property is on the corner of Aria Peter Avenue. 
and Gattaca Street in Woodbrook, right? You can also be more precise to say that it's on the eastern side, or the western side rather, of the corner of Aripita Avenue and Gattaca Street. This is the same directions that you would give anybody who is trying to find your property. Section 7 is for commercial buildings and here's just as a residential page you will put in the relevant details associated with your commercial property, the date of completion, the area of each floor, any tenants and so on. As I had mentioned earlier, if you do not know any of this information or are unsure, you can leave that blank as they have to do an inspection anyway and capture that information. That would include building defects as well as flooring and ceiling as well. Page 8, which is 7D to list installed plant and machinery is more common for industrial property and I suspect that this would not apply to anyone who's filing the return at this point. And finally, um, section 7E again applies to only commercial property and you would simply at the end of it put your signature and date. So you'd have to print this page, sign it and date it. As you would have seen earlier, any information that does not apply or that you are confused about or unsure about, you can simply leave it out. Once complete, the valuation return form along with the attachments can be dropped off at any location of the valuation division that's provided on their website. You may also drop it off in one of the drop boxes that is provided. This has been another video presentation from GA Farland Associates Limited. We hope that you found it informative and useful. If you have any questions on the valuation return form, please contact the Ministry of Finance using the contact information provided on their website. We would also encourage you to have a look at part two of our series, which is on the online submission of the valuation return. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the second installment of our presentation on the valuation return form 2021. In this segment, we'll be looking at the online submission option for filing the return. The previous video provided guidance on how to complete and submit the manual form. As mentioned in that video, we kindly ask that you pay careful attention to the date of this presentation, September 14th, 2021, as subsequent developments may invalidate the information presented here. Should the Ministry of Finance release any guidelines that conflicts with what we have presented, we strongly advise that you follow the Ministry's guidelines. Before we begin looking at the form itself, you should note that it requires all owners and occupiers of all residential property, commercial property and agricultural property to file the return. And this would include owners of vacant residential land, single family houses, townhouses, apartments or condominiums and multifamily units. In the case of commercial land, it will be vacant commercial land, office and retail buildings as well as special purpose properties. For agricultural land, it would include vacant agricultural land, cultivated land, livestock farms, and forested lands. It would also include mixed properties such as where an owner or occupier is occupying part of the building and using another part of it for commercial or other purposes. The return does not apply to industrial property at this time such as warehouses, plant and machinery housed in buildings such as those of the oil and gas industry, manufacturing and processing plants. Also, for persons who filed the valuation return voluntarily in 2017 and were visited by officers of the valuation division, they need not submit this form at this point as their properties were already assessed. You should note that persons who filed a return in 2017 but were not yet visited, they are required to file this return as well. In order to access the online platform, you first must open up a web browser and then go to the ministry's website which is valuationdivision.gov.tt. When the web page opens, you will see the call for the return at the start and then when you scroll to the bottom, you will then see two links. One is to acquire the valuation return form which is a PDF form that you can submit manually. We have described that process in our first part of this video series, which you, which you should look at. And on the left hand side, you will see a red button that says online return portal. So when you click on that button, it will then open up a login page and you would have to register an account by including your email address as well as a password. A link will then be sent to your email, which you would need to click on to verify the account before you log in. 
After registering, you can then put in your login credentials and click on Login. This then opens up the portal, in which case to start a return, you then have to click on this red button here that says Start New Return. When the form opens up, the first thing that comes up is a list of required documentation. As we mentioned earlier, the only things that are required for this would be a scan of your ID as well as two views of the property, a front view and a side view. These photographs can be taken with your cell phone and stored in a convenient location on your computer for easy upload. If you have other documents such as your title document like your deed or RPO certificate of title, your cadastral survey plan, your WASA bill and so on, you may upload those as well. However, they are not necessary to complete the return. You can then click on next to move to the next page. The next page that comes up would be the property details and this is where you are entering information on the property to be assessed. So this is simply the address of the property. So say it's you have a house number and this is number 51 Harris Street in San Fernando. The municipal corporation here of course will be San Fernando City Corp. Any field that you see that has an asterisk, a red asterisk on it, will be a required field and you must enter something there in order to continue with this return. So as you would see, apartment number and building number does not have an asterisk next to it, so you do not need to enter it here as those things may not apply. Going down, it would be important for you to enter the type of property that this is. So if it is residential vacant land, you'll click on this one or commercial offices or forested agricultural lands and so on. So in this example, I'm going to select single family dwelling, assuming that most people filing this return would be a residential property. The ownership details is a necessary field. But again, if you don't understand what these terms freehold and leasehold means, you can simply put other. And then when they obtain a copy of the title documents, they will figure it out themselves. There's a description here that you see freehold is land held in fee simple without a time limit. That of course is technical language that not everyone may understand. So if you do not understand what freehold and leasehold means, you can simply put other. Was the property purchased within the last three years? If it was, and you are stating yes, you would have to include the purchase price. If not, you can simply select no and that doesn't come up at all. The type of title document that you may have can be a deed or certificate of title if the, if the property is registered under the real property ordinance. If you do not know what this means, you can simply put a deed or simply leave this out as this is not a required field. The land area is the area as stated in the title document in square meters. So some title documents like the deed will have a schedule and the schedule usually has a land area, although sometimes it does not. So if you know the land area of your property, you can include it here. And remember, it must be in square meters. So let's say this property is 465 square meters. You can enter that here. If you do not know what the land area is, because of the fact that this is a required field, you can simply enter one as the land area, right? It is obvious that your property will not be one square meter. So the valuation division will have to do further investigations into the title or take measurements or whatever they need to do to get the information that they need. The directions of the property would be what you would simply tell anyone who is trying to locate your property. So in this case, I put the property is in ninth house on the right hand side of Harris Street when entering from Rushwood Street. So whatever description you usually tell someone when they're trying to find your property, that's what you would type here. If you are very tech savvy and very familiar with mapping and that sort of thing, and you want to include the Google coordinates or Waze location, that would also be good to put in here. But a, a narrative description like this is adequate. And then you simply click on save and continue and it will go on to the next page. The next page that comes up would be the contact details for the persons who own or occupy the property. So if the property is owned and occupied by the same person, this first question will be no. It's only if it's occupied by someone other than the owner, such as a relative or a tenant, you would put yes. And here's where we put the number of owners or occupiers. So let's say there was one owner. I would put one here and select add 
And here's where I'll put the contact details for that one person who owns the property. So I select add new and I would indicate that this person is an owner and their first name is let's say John and surname is Doe. And if it's a company that owns it, you can put in the company name here. If not, you can simply um, leave this blank if it's an uh, individual owner. Okay, so I would leave this blank because this is a uh, private property owner. Okay, and the, uh, the mailing address of that person is what you would have to enter here. So of course, if this person is occupying the same property that is being assessed, you will put the same address that we had before. So I'm going to put here again, 51 Parish Street in San Fernando. Okay. And you have to enter the municipal corporation. So San Fernando City Corporation automatically comes up. So whether it is um, San Fernando City Corporation, Port of Spain City Corporation, Shagona's Borough Corporation, you'd have to put the municipal corporation here. It ought to come up automatically for you when you enter the town. Okay. The country is Trinidad and Tobago. Primary phone number, you have to give them a contact number and an email. Okay. as well as providing an ID for this person. So if you have the national ID for them, you can enter that here or their driver's permit number or whatever the case is. So once as you have all of the mandatory fields entered, you then click save and close. Okay, and you would then have to add new if you have more than one person. So we have one person here already so i can go back to the valuation return form and as i indicated that there was just one owner i've already provided the details for that one owner and so this page is now complete so if you had two persons listed here and you only provided information for one of them it will say it's incomplete so you have to add the information for all the persons you've put so if you put four persons you have to add the contact details for those four persons and so then we click save and continue to progress to the next page Next would be information on the buildings if there are any on site. If you're filing this return in respect of vacant land, you can simply put no to this question and move on. If there are buildings on site, select yes and enter the number of buildings there are. So in this case, I'm going to say there is one building and then you click on add to add new details of that building. So I select add new here and I would see it, say that it is a residential structure because that's the example that I'm following along with. You have to name the building i'm going to put main house as um as this is just one building of course if you had multiple buildings you need to distinguish them like front building back building building a and so on and so forth give an estimate of when construction was completed and if you don't know this you can just guess it 10 years if it's being used for commercial activity you select yes if not you put no you have to put an option for flooring and ceiling finishes so if you have let's say ceramic tile floors and a pvc ceiling if you don't know what any of these terms mean or if your finishes are not listed here just select other okay if you have building defects such as cracks to your walls um, termite infestation and so on you can enter that information here sundry city building are things like air conditioning so most residences that have air conditioning are either split units or window units Okay, if you have none, you can select none. And then you have to enter the number of floors that you have. So let's say you, it's a single story building. You will click on just the ground floor alone. If it's two stories or more, you have to press and hold the control button and then select those. So it will select simultaneously. So you see this now recognizes that I've selected two floors, the ground and first. And they're now asking that you put in these areas. If you already have the areas of your floors, then you can enter that here. There's no need for you to measure your building. There's no need for you to hire someone to measure your building. So if you do not have that information, simply put one because these are required fields when they shouldn't be. Just to get around the fact that they are mandatory. So just enter one. The valuation division will have to measure your property and get that information anyway. You would then put the accommodation. So say your property has a living room, a kitchen and a dining room on the ground floor. You would put one for each of those things here and probably let's say a bathroom or a half bath that just has a toilet okay if your first floor or the upstairs 
has three bedrooms, one of which is a master bedroom. The master bedroom is a bedroom with a bathroom attached. So I put one here and put the other two as regular bedrooms. Okay. And if it also has another bathroom, you can put that here. Everything else that does not apply, leave it as the default, which is zero. Okay. If the building has tenants, you can select yes, in which case you would have to put in the number of tenants and the information for them. If not, you select no, and then click save and close. So now you see it's recognizing that I've already entered the data for one house. If you have entered two or more structures, you'll have to add them individually. Otherwise, it will show an error. So when I go back to the return form, this will now show that this section is complete because I said that there was one building and I entered the details of that one building. So you see how it says complete here. If I had entered two buildings and I only put in the details for one, it will show an error. So you have to put in the details for each building that you mentioned in this section. So we then click save and continue to move on. The next tab would be to upload documents. So as I mentioned, the necessary things to upload would be a scan of your ID as well as two views of the property. So you should have these located in a convenient folder on your computer. So I'm going to select select files and I'm going to find that convenient folder that I have where I have sample information and I'm going to upload the ID and I'm going to upload the, a picture of the front of the house and the side of the house. And that's all that is necessary in terms of attachments. Of course, if you also have a scan of your WASA bill, a scan of your deed, you can and should upload those documents, but these are not necessary. So if you do not have a survey plan, a cadastral survey plan, there is no need for you to go find that now. There's no need for you to go and get a surveyor to do a cadastral for you. If you don't have building plans, there's no need for you to get that now. All of this information is optional information if you have those documents. Right? The only thing that's needed is the two photos of the house and a scan of your ID. And then we click on next. The final thing would be to actually submit the form and you have to select I declare in which case you are attesting to the fact that the information that you've provided is as accurate as possible to the best of your knowledge and then click submit return. When you click on submit return, an email will then be sent to the email address that you provided indicating that the return was received and you will be given a reference number. You should keep that email or print it out and that will be your evidence that you've submitted the information and the valuation division will then get in touch with you in a couple of days to ask any questions they may have or to arrange an inspection of the property and so on. So once you've done that, you have completed this process. So to compare this to the manual system, this online form could be done entirely online. It will not require you to print anything. It will not require you to go in to submit anything. The only downside I will say with the online form is that it has many fields that has this red asterisk, which is mandatory right like building details for example and quite often those details are technical details that many people will not know but as i described to you earlier there are ways to get around that and those are totally legitimate ways as the valuation division would be doing their inspection in which case they will acquire all of the necessary building details that they need in order to complete their assessment okay so i'm not going to click submit return because this is just a demonstration so I hope that this has provided you with as much information as you need to fill out this return on your own. There's no need for you to hire someone to do this. There is no need for you to get assistance to do this. But if you do, you should reach out to the valuation division. You should reach out to the Ministry of Finance. But it is simple enough once as you follow these instructions to do this all on your own without assistance. This has been another video presentation from GA Farrell & Associates Limited. We know that it was a bit long and so we thank you for your time and attention. If you need any other information on the valuation return, please reach out to the Ministry of Finance using the contact information provided on their website. You may also like to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more informative videos on valuation and real estate.